Hello everybody and welcome to another Transformers third party review thanks to the team at Robot Kingdom. Today we're taking a look at the latest offering from G Creation. Haven't had anything from them for a while but glad they are back and they are definitely back with a vengeance. I've been messing around with this figure for the last couple of days and it is sublime. This is the MT ST01 creation produced by G Studio. This is the M. Wrath, part of their Metal series. It is, of course, the Age of Extinction Grimlock with Prime. Really hefty box, and I mean, really hefty. There's so much weight to this piece. We've got Grimlock in his uh, dyno mode there. Got Prime on top, and we've got Grimlock in his bot mode. And please excuse the highly reflective surface you're seeing my lights there, but we've got some nice shots on the back there, just showing how poseable this smaller Prime is. And uh, Grimlock in both modes looks sensational. He's packaged in the box very securely within this plastic clamshell, and here we have him out of his plastic prison. Uh, you have to manoeuvre the legs somewhat to get them to work for you uh, but he's a heavy heavy figure i mean really heavy there's so much weight to him that's because there's so much going on if you're a fan of the likes of gx9 and unique toys and their kind of lack magic of transforming this is very much on par there's a lot going on with this figure it's actually very very impressive uh, leaps and bounds engineering wise above what G Creation have released in the past, in my opinion. But the sculpt on Grimlock is absolutely sublime. I'm just hoping you can pick that up on the camera. It is gorgeous. Up close and personal, just look at how intricate that all is. That is absolutely mind-blowing levels of detailing the teeth are pretty sharp we've got the tongue in there as well i got one of my hairs we'll ignore that that's there there we go <laughs> got the head on a pivot piston driven in and out It is ridiculously heavy as well. You do have to really kind of work the feet uh, the first few times. You just need to work out where the balance points are, uh, depending on what you want him to do. If you want him to run forward, you have to bring the legs right forward and then uh, tilt the feet kind of backwards to get it all balanced out. Make sure you angle those feet correctly. And I mean, it will stand nicely uh, my base is a little bit wobbly for him but really hope that this is capturing the levels of detailing they've gone for let's take a look at prime even prime alone he is plugged in at his butt oh, and out you come out you come out you come out you come <laughs> got him uh, even prime yeah albeit he is non-transforming he really does look the part uh, let's get in nice and close there just look at those paint applications this is a gorgeous prime one of the nicest looking primes that i have and obviously this is kind of legend scale paint is sublime isn't it got the tabs there we can put the shield or the sword on there we do have articulation head and go up down left and right ball mounted shoulders around and around hinges on those shoulder pads albeit they are very very tight there's an upper bicep rotation there's a bend on the elbow rotation on the wrists there waist rotation is there but it's very very stiff and there is an abdominal kind of torso crunch as well we have the movement on the front legs can come forwards backwards out to the side upper thigh rotation and we have a nice bend and we have pivot on the feet as well so he looks 
apart. Yes, he doesn't transform. Now, that is the downside, but still. What a gorgeous little man. And having him there compared to the figure that comes with Black Mamba's version. Yes, uh, we know that the G Creation version of Grimlock is much smaller than the Black Mamba version. It is kind of a hybrid height. It's bigger than what we get with the officials, uh, smaller than the Black Mamba ones, but they haven't just blown up a huge kind of studio series figure. They have created a unique individual figure. And uh, well, if their prime is anything to go by here, yeah. gives you an idea of how good Grimlock's gonna look. Now I know a lot of you collect the MPM lines and a lot of you collect the studio series as well. So I thought this would be a fairly decent comparison. I know these are different movies, but it still gives you an idea of what sort of size we're dealing with. Personally, vehicle mode, I think uh, being a dinosaur in his alt mode, I think he does scale rather nicely with the studio series figures. But uh, that being said, uh, MPM Prime, uh, which is basically what the Legendary Toys figure is based off, even then, that's not a terrible look. It's not in scale with what we got in the movie, but uh, still doesn't look terrible to say the least. Uh, but I think the Constructicons being large construction vehicles, I think personally with a nice kind of nod to G1, I think that works the best in my opinion. So dyno articulation, we've got up, down, we can uh, rotate left and right there. We've got the mouth that opens, we've got the horns on the top, you can have up or down. We've got rotation on the arms, a little bit of a curl there. So I just love that expression on the face. Uh, the legs, if I move up these hip skirts, so we do have rotation inwards and outwards, up and down. We have a thigh bend there as well, so we can straighten out those legs. I love that we've got a really kind of wide stance there. We can bring those round. That I like, you get a really decent angle on those legs. And we do get some curvature on the tail as well. Like I said, it took me a while to figure out the articulation, but just give yourself time, come down to the legs, expose them, and just see what works for you. Remember that you've got that out motion, you've got some curvature in those thighs as well. You know, there's lots that we can do with them. The legs do tend to come unpegged here, uh, but we do get, again, that rotation in the lower leg, which really helps stabilize those feet. So there's a lot that we can do. Just uh, take your time. Take your time and you will get your gorgeous Grimlock very well balanced. But uh, don't rush in. Don't expect it to work straight away. You have to kind of work those joints and see what works for you. Uh, like I said, the outwards motion, that's a really handy joint to have. It gives him a kind of staggered, almost kind of chicken leg look, I guess. It's just a fun uh, thing to have. I would have really liked kind of a stand still just to really help balance him so you can get him in kind of these running poses. It's just so much die cast in this front section that he does tend to lean forward. That's something you really do need to bear in mind, but my goodness me, just look how gorgeous those paint apps are. And to get our beautiful Grimlock transformed up, you want to start off at the top here. You're going to unplug these pieces from both sides, untab these pieces, like so, and untab these hip skirt pieces as well. That allows this entire back section to be removed, and that's gonna form part of the weapon. We now need to bring this tail upwards, doing the same with the neck. Untab these pieces either side. Now there's enough bend and flex in this port and this knee panel here, which allows us to bring these leg pieces forward. You wanna do that for both sides. So again, on this side, just bring that up and using this bend on the thigh, that'll come round and that clears all of this head section. Making sure we've got ample space around the back piece here. This is gonna lift up 
this is gonna rotate down and around. Make sure you straighten up this foot hinge. This piece here rotates around. It's gonna come around, push and tab into position. This comes up. The dyno leg is gonna rotate around. And if you look here, there's this tab. Just gonna push, lock and tab in. This is then going to come in. And again, there's this tab here. Push, lock, and tab that in. Bring that down. Bring the heel spur out, like so. Bring the toe section up. Come around to these knees. Bring those knee points out. And push and tab those thigh parts into position. Push the crotch plate down. And tab the hands from the back of the legs. Compress the toes. Untab the shin guard. Rotate this foot panel around. Do love that little tiny heel spur that we've got there as well. But uh, this is going to rock upwards. And in to there like so. We can then straighten up those hands and bring the thumb joint up. Bring up the head, like so. And you've got the horn on the top there as well. Rotate this back panel piece so that the dyno is at the top, like so. The tail section is going to split, like so. That's gonna come up. This piece here is gonna push downwards. So we're left for something that looks like this. That's then gonna push down on this hinge, come back and rock, and that should push and tab in on there, he says. There, like so. Split our dyno head, like so. Bring one up and one down. There's these antennae sections, the horns. Bring those up and across these parts open and fold so that our dyno heads can come out to either side. This is then going to rock up. Got these hinges here. These are going to compress inwards. They just uh, slide along here. So see they go all the way from here and slide those into the middle, rotating that up and over that should he says tab in nicely on that neck panel like so bring these in at the back making sure that the dyno tongue piece is down this is then going to fall backwards and then compressing on this sliding hinge that's going to push and tab in same with this side bring that up compress on that sliding hinge Then just push and line those shoulder panels up. Now bring these dyno chest pieces down like so. This is then gonna come up, slide in, and go over the shoulder. Again, come up, slide in, and come up and over the shoulder, which I have not yet rotated around. There we go, rotate that around, bring the arm down like this. And these waist pieces here are going to hook down and come all the way down and tab in lower and then this piece here comes up joining onto the top and final touches let's just tidy up these arms uh, this section here is going to untab like so that's going to lift up this is going to come out tab all the way around bend this tab up on this shoulder piece like so, straighten this arm, bring that down, like so, bring this up, and this is gonna come all the way up like so. This will lift in, that'll go into that void and tab in. The shoulder tab can then come down, 
bring the arm up and then collapse Grimlock's dino heads over those shoulders. Now let's attack that weapon. Right, you want to bring this piece around and this piece around. This piece here is going to come up, that's going to rotate. This piece here will flip upwards. Uh, we've got these points on here, they're going to rotate as well, that'll rotate as well. These will come in and come in. This point here pushes through as we flip this piece around, extend this panel piece, like so, make sure that comes down. Uh, this piece here is going to hoik. Hoik is an official term, obviously. <laughs> and that should tab in on there like so these pieces here should he says tab in together like that and then this comes up and there's these two tabs here that's going to come in slide in and that's going to push like so straighten up at the top here there we go that's in that's in that's in it's going to come up over and attach to the top like that and then we can bring our mace piece in and that's just going to slide in oh tabbing in like so and what a hefty weapon and with the hand in this position here bring in the ball piece and there's a tab just on the underside of the hand which pushes and tabs that into position and then we can bring this other piece in over the top and that's going to push and secure giving him that kind of boulder like weaponry and here we have him fully transformed up see there's a lot involved with him but the overall result i think is exceptionally well done. I just haven't pulled his knee pads down on both knees, have I there? Yeah, shame on me. But he definitely looks the part anyway. It's a really gorgeous piece. A lot of the heft and die cast does kind of put him slightly off balance when he's in his dyno mode, but that's something you just need to work on. Just maneuver those joints, getting them to work for yourselves. And the overall result, I think, is definitely the best offering thus far for both molds. I will bring in the Black Mamba version of this character shortly. Now, I have noticed there's a small defect with mine. The red dino eyes on the chest panels aren't painting up. They are bland and uh, bleak at the moment, but uh, still looks the part nonetheless. They're really excited to have this piece in hand. Uh, remarkably well made, uh, by far their best piece construction wise without a shadow of a doubt he feels sublime really really impressed with that whether they've changed their factory or just changed the materials being used genuinely very impressed and the overall trip from a to b was not horrific which was nice i hope i didn't make it uh, too complex in the video this transformation uh, the instructions aren't brilliant but the transformation itself isn't a nightmare so uh, Hopefully that came across okay. He does look absolutely sublime, especially with the Prime figure that they released. Uh, those two look amazing together. Do you think? I think that definitely, definitely works. Let's bring in some more of the kind of movie-verse figures just to give you an idea of comparison. For those of you collecting the MPM line, no, no, it probably doesn't fit. That's uh, nowhere near big enough, in my opinion. But for those of you collecting the Studio Series line, uh, yeah, I think that could definitely, definitely work. I think that's a pretty decent size. And here we have him with the Black Mamba version, which uh, honestly isn't a bad figure at all. It's just the levels of detailing that G Creation have gone to uh, just recreating that look of Grimlock. We're insane. Just even looking at the arms, it puts the Black Mamba version it's a shame black member fantastic piece to have 
on display and uh, at the back of your display is a bit the G creation. When I got him into this robot mode for the first time, I didn't put him down. I kept posing him, kept looking at him, just kind of glaring at some of the detailing on him and uh, genuinely really impressed. Weakest part, possibly the mace. It's still a good chunk of a weapon. And I understand why they've done what they've done, kept it very similar to what we got with the toy, where that piece kind of forms up into a weapon. But uh, yeah, not necessarily an essential piece. I possibly could have done with just having it as a standalone uh, weapon, but I suppose it's uh, all part and parcel. It's not really parts for me, I guess, if it combines to form a weapon. And before we go, let's just take a look at Grimlock's articulation, the head uh, with an amazing sculpt, by the way, up, down, left and right. We've got some uh, kind of quizzical tilting in there, but I think it's mainly a ball socketed pivot. Uh, it's hard to tell without popping that head off. Uh, I'm going to remove the mace weapon for now because it is ridiculously heavy. I mean, really, really heavy. Uh, the arms can come out to the sides on this kind of double joint in there. We can bring them forwards as well. It sounds like a very kind of light ratchet in there. Ratchet on those forearms. I love how high we can bring that kind of mace section up to the front. And I love the fact we can bring these kind of Grimlockish dino heads over to the side, bring that down. Have uh, a hand that is exposed at the moment. You see, we've got a highly articulated hand there. Fingers are loose, but not too loose. Pivot on the wrist as well as rotation. We have rotation on the waist. No abdominal crunch in there. That's one of my biggest gripes about this piece. Is there no abdominal crunch? Uh, you know, I'm a stickler for that. Uh, we have legs that can come as far forwards. Unfortunately, the crotch panel does move up with them. We can come this far backwards. You have to move the hip skirts again to get full range. Come out to the side. Upper thigh rotation in there. Very, very stiff joint, but it does still work. And we get a lovely kind of piston driven knee point there. Uh, not the most natural of knees, but it does the job. Bring that down and come down to the feet. We've got up and down on those feet. An annoyingly tight pivot on those as well, so we can get a really tight, wide uh, stance on Grimlock as well. So there we have it, ladies and gentlemen, the mighty leader, Wrath or Wraith, I suppose, depending on your pronunciation. Either way, this is, of course, Grimlock. Uh, exceptionally well done. Really like how they've done it. Gorgeous display piece. Fun to mess around with and pose. Uh, he must be a photographer's dream. Just of all the high levels of detailing and gorgeous paint applications. Uh, really looking forward to seeing what else they do in this movie line. I know it's a step away from what we're used to from them, but it's a good step nonetheless. Uh, let's hope the next selection don't take quite as long uh, to come to be as this figure did, but uh, really looking forward to what they have to offer. Thanks again to Robot Kingdom for getting this piece sent out to me as quickly as they did. I hope you found the video useful. If you have, feel free to give it a big thumbs up, share, and also feel free to subscribe. Thanks again to all of my Patreons. Without you, these reviews would not be possible. And for myself and the rest of the Collectibles household. Thank you all for watching. Until next time, uh, goodbye.